Hey you, welcome to Slay the Spire. Today playing the Daily Challenge for October 26, 2024. The character The Defect and the Mod Pass are all star, started with 5 colorless cards. Purple cards, purple cards are on Peter Rewards and Shops. In Big Game Hunter, elite enemies are now swarming the Spire and drop better awards. I'm a little worried that I'm not seeing any familiar names at all. That makes me think this might be a difficult run. There's Gold Bear here with 1269th and 55th place, and Ichu with 1256. Okay, so I guess it's not impossible to survive, but yeah, Defect and Purple cards, at least with the rare cards, it should be interesting to do something with Blasphemy and Intangibility or Buffer, but uh, yeah, hopefully, ooh, two transportations. I do want to remove one of them. I think I do want to try to go for the Highlander modifier. Uh, yesterday, that was probably a mistake. A lot of people who did well did not go for Highlander. Um, but yeah, the finesse, sadistic nature, discovery. I mean, they're fine. I, I guess I need to pick up some more attack cards to do well against the first elites. There's a five elite path. Oof, that might be a reason why a lot of people died. All right, I, I think I have to take it though. Um, so I have to take these three elites in the middle with one question mark room. Up until that point, if I go there on the left, I'll get two question mark rooms. If I go in the middle, I'll get also two question mark rooms. Are the path identical? Yeah, they are. All right, fine. I guess in that case, um, do I want to question mark rooms early or late? I guess late? I don't know. Yeah, let's go on the right then. Or middle right. All right, so here, let's double defend and then discovery. Uh, Meteor Strike for free. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Well, that's a great card to get from discovery. Should I do something with the transportation as well? Because I have so much energy now. Uh, here, let's do dual cast for even more energy. Then defend and strike. And then let's see what the transportation gives me. Wow, look at that. All right. Uh, well, mind blast kills. Okay. All right, Consecrate, Weave, or Recursion. Um, none of this really fits the deck at the moment. I do desperately need tax. So let's take the Consecrate. And I was going to go this way, right? Um, you know what? I think here I can risk Transportation. Uh, okay, let's do Blind, Secret Technique. I don't know. Discovery, sure. Forethought that. And uh, wait. Okay, that was not the best Transportation there. Or Incoming. Let's do Sadistic Nature, Consecrate, Defend, and Two Strikes. Okay. And then 9, uh, Finesse gives me the free Discovery, which gives me Compiled Driver, I guess? Or go for the Ice to defend a little? Um, I, I don't know. Let, let, I guess I'll do Compiled Driver, sure. Then do Compiled Driver, Dual Cast, and a Strike. Okay, that was actually enough to kill. Good. Recursion, Claw, Bowling Bash. A again, I need Attack Card, so let's take the Bowling Bash. Here, I'm losing 7, 12, 18, oof, 25. Wow. 33 HP to get 10 HP back. Great. Pair up. Big out race to make sure by 10. Okay. That 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 might be that might be dangerous. You have to be a little bit more careful than I would be otherwise. Let's do dual cast. It's really hoping it would hit this one. Alright, let me see if the transportation gives me a block card. Beautiful. Yeah, it did actually give me a block card. Awesome. Another five. Um, I think I'll do zap, defend, and a strike. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then here, let's see what the Discovery gives me. Oh, look at that. Okay, Discovery sometimes can give you really nice things. Nirvana, Halt, or Consecrate. I already have to Consecrate. I don't really need Nirvana. I don't really need Halt. I might consider skipping this one. Yeah, let's skip this one. It's just, I don't want to put up junk in my deck, and those cards were pretty much junk. So just the nature finesse. Uh, should I do Transportation again? Let's do Defend first, then Transportation. Good Instincts. Okay, that's the second time I got a defensive card when I needed it. Mm-hmm. Another 10. I don't think I'll... Well, let's do Defend Dual Cast, and then I'll do one Energy Transportation for a Flash of Steel. Okay. Too bad I can't play the Discovery there. Not being attacked, so let's try to deal as much damage as I can. Okay, can I come up with 10 minus 3, so 7 damage? Yeah, Bowling Bash is enough. Beautiful. Let me see what this gives me. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it can give me, like, a Hand of Greed or something, right? Got a Dex Potion, Recycle, Cool-Headed, or Hologram. Cool-headed hologram. They're all fine. Who's my final boss, by the way? Guardian. I wouldn't mind getting some frost drops. Let's take the cool-headed. Card draw is always nice, too. All right, Lego Woolen here. I probably want to play some good transportations if I can. Um, well, let's wait here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's a discovery that gives me devotion. All right, that should help. And another zap. Okay. And then next turn, I sort of have to... Yeah, great. I got two transportations in the same hand. Uh, I think I'll play one of them. Okay, this is not bad. I got Magnetism, uh, the, um, Ra uh, not Ragnarok, Havoc, or Mayhem, sorry. And then Discovery gives me Swivel. Rip and Terror FTL. FTL is not going to trigger, right, because I already play played three cards. I guess I'll do Swivel, so that my next attack is free. I do Rip and Terror. 
Let's do Rip and Tear. I'm a little worried because next turn I get two um, two offensive cards, so I might have trouble defending against 18. Mayhem played a Consecrate. Cool-headed. Yeah, there's nothing I could have gotten for me to be able to perfect this one, especially not with this hand. So fine, I'll take a little bit of damage here. I do have to be careful. All right, so here I got another strike. Um, I think I'll try to fully defend as much as I can. Well, I'll have 17 block, get attacked by 18, okay? And then next turn, I'll be in Divinity, right? Uh, let's do Panache, Finesse, a Rip and Tear, Bowling Bash, and Consecrate, okay? All right, and then here, oh, come on, I only have one attack. That's actually unfortunate. Let's do Cool Headed. At least that one attack is enough. All right, survived this one. Got Ron Scale, Sarge Combo, three Thorns, a Liquid Bronze Potion, and yeah, definitely going to start with the Omniscience, although I don't have enough energy for that, right? I might have to upgrade it. I do have a Rest Side, but I have to fight two Elites before that Rest Side. We got Frozen Egg, one of you add a Power Card into your deck, upgrade it. Really nice with the defect. Okay, Grim Knob. Do I want to do Transmutation here? It is worth the risk, I think. Oof. Okay, this is not possibly worth it. Hmm... I do have a panic button somewhere in the deck now. Just have to get it. 14. If I do three defense... Uh, yeah, fine. I don't think I really have a good choice, though. Okay, another 20. Well, there's the omniscience I can't play. Uh, let's do sadistic nature. I guess I'll do cool-headed. And two strikes. I barely dealt damage. I might have to drink the liquid bronze, too, there. And this is the small attack, too, right? Let's see what the discovery gives me. Compile driver bias, cognition, or sash whip. I don't think bias cognition is enough. I guess the only chance is for the compile driver to give me the um the uh, panic button. No, no, there's nothing I can do against 18, right? I unfortunately think I have to reload this one and drink all my potions and just hope for the best because, um, yeah, this is going to be tough. My deck just didn't have enough good def uh, offensive cards. My first turn wasn't that great either. All right, let's drink this and this. I still think I should do transportation. I mean, knowing that it gives me junk, should I change it up? Let's change it up. Let's do finesse first and then strike and bowling bash. Let's do one energy transportation. Okay, I still got the panic button, so that's good. All right, 14. Here, interesting. I got different cards. I'll double defend and then do zap. That might make a small difference. All right, and then here, I think I'll do cool headed. I don't think I can do transportation. Let's do two strikes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty much dead here again, right? Unless I get a panic button. Okay. Yeah, different RNG gave me different things here. Um, I think I I should do compile driver. Okay. Then consecrate strike, panic button, then transportation. Um, I can secret technique something I don't want, like the omniscience. And then, yeah, next turn, that is enough to kill. I mean, I'm just barely alive, though. We got Sundial, every three times to shuffle, drop out, again, two extra energy, judgment, lesson learned, meteor strike, let's take the lesson learned. The problem is I have so little HP, and I wanted to upgrade the omniscience at the rest side, but I can't. All right, we got Bottle Tornado, pick up, choose a power card, search, come with this guy in your hand. I guess I'll take the sadistic nature. Not sure if that's going to be super helpful. I might have a chance against the Legavulin. Let's do sadistic nature transmutation. Okay, Chrysalis is not bad. All right, I only got the third eye out of that. That is really useful. All right, let's do Finesse. Cool-headed. Zap. Okay. All right. And then here... Okay, I did get the third eye. Should I do Conjure Blade? It's not that much damage. I was hoping for more. Next turn, I don't have any... Barely... Well, I basically have no defensive card. Let me see. Cut through Fate might be enough with the third eye to basically force a reshuffle. Let's do Cut Through Fate. I think I'll get the transportation. And then see what that gives me. Violence. It's not going to do anything. Um, well, actually, wait. This would be a uh, zero, 9 times 0, so the expansion would be useless. Um, I think I'll just, I'll just wait here. Oh, boy. Can I defend against 18? Um, Cool-headed. Finesse. Uh, double defend would be 16. Or I can do dual cast. That's uh, 14. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not dealing damage, but I'm somehow alive. Okay. And then this is, I think, where my luck stops, though, right? Let's do cut through fate. Recycle. I could recycle the conjure blade. No, no. I have to get rid of these two and hope I get... I don't know. No, there's nothing I could have done here. 
All right, well, that explains the low scores. Um, what can I do differently? Let me think about that. I I don't think I can skip leads. I don't think there were really card choices that I could have done differently. Maybe there was an early shot. Maybe going for that would increase my chances of grabbing, like, one good attack card. Uh, so I'm talking about this shop. I barely have enough gold, but let's try this. Uh, so I'm going to try to go for the shop. I'll keep everything else the same way, and I'll be back with the second leg of the fight in a second. All right, so I actually forgot to uh, turn on my mic when I went back. So uh, the rest of the run did not have my original commentary. I'm recording this after the fact. So uh, yeah, apologies for that. But I'll try my best to recreate the same excitement. So I figured I'll start recording again after uh, or at the shop. And uh, I was considering the Entropic Brew, which I thought might help against the upcoming elites. But then I thought maybe the aggregate is better. Um, ultimately, Entropic Brew is a one-time use with aggregate might come in handy. And spoiler alert, it was actually very handy. So uh, yeah, here I'm, I'm guessing I'm reviewing the deck again. I don't even remember what I said here. But yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I ended up taking the aggregate. Uh, that allowed me to uh, also either take the go for the ads or a potion. I figured I'd take the fire potion because that might help against the upcoming Grumnot, Gremlin Knob fight. Uh, so yeah. And then moving on, I just I realized that there's also a path on the right that gives me an early question mark room. Uh, I could also go on the left, which gives me a lead first and then a question mark room. And because I went on the left last time, I figured I'd go on the right. And interestingly, this was a different event. So this time it's the spinning wheel event. And I was wishing for a relic. I remember that. But no, instead I got the full heal, which actually might have been better because I did lose a lot of HP trying to get that pair. So yeah, I was able to heal back to full. And here it's the Lego Vulan fight. Again, I started with finesse and set it to nature. I think that was the same as before. And uh, yeah, next I see what the discovery gives me. Scrape Devotion. I think I took the Devotion again. Yep. And then I played the Zap. All right. And then the next turn, there is the Agate with the Transportation. Unfortunately, Agate is useless because I only have two cards in my draw pile. So I risk the Transportation. And this gives gave me the same cards I, as I got before, uh, including the same options here. I actually thought I should re-record again because some of the card choices were unfamiliar. So I think I got a uh, Bullseye before from a from a discovery like in a few fights ago uh, so i thought maybe i already changed the rng but no some of the rng seems to stay consistent also was able to get munitions there here i'm taking damage there's nothing i could do about that here the aggregate at least gives me one extra energy i did flash of steel uh, i didn't really know what to munitions here i could consider munitions in the conjure blade but that seems seems silly so i have munitions just a rip and tear just to deal a little bit of damage and then i think before playing the transportation i played two defense yep and then I played through Transportation, which unfortunately didn't give me anything amazing. But um, yeah, so I'm still taking some damage. But at least thanks to that heal previously, I'm at least not dead. Here I got some great zero cost cards. I can easily kill with the Sunder. Okay. I guess this is also a good opportunity for me to review any mistakes I made. I got Bronze Scales, which I already had before. Omniscience, Vault, or Bias Condition. I took the Omniscience because I figured it should come in handy later. All right, now unfortunately, the problem with the Omniscience is that I don't have a lot of energy. So um, yeah, I won't be able to really play it until I get energy. So here I started with Sadistic Nature, and then I risked what the Transportation would give me. Unfortunately, it did give me a Blind, which d does deal damage with the Sadistic Nature. But unfortunately, not enough, so I will still take some damage. And knowing that I was I died the first time by just not having enough HP, it's of course a little annoying that I lose HP. Here I was able to play Building Bash and the Strike, and then the Lightning Orb. Uh, I didn't need to play those defensive cards, because the Lightning Orb was enough to kill. Got a colorless potion there, ball lightning, empty fist, or claw. I was thinking of taking empty fist in case I enter wrath, but no, I think this run is going for an orb deck, so I figured I'd take the ball lightning instead. And, and yeah, spoiler alert, I did not get many ways to enter wrath uh, in the future. Yeah, I got transportation, panacea, jack all traits. I was hoping that the panic button would be really useful on a reshuffle. I also still had the two fire potions. Unfortunately, there's nothing I could do here to defend against 14. I played the ball lightning and then the discovery. Equilibrium does give me some block, but it's not going to be enough. I was considering drinking the colorless potion, but I figured if there's no way for me to really defend here, I should just save my potions for another fight and just get through this. Um, Aggud is unfortunately very useless here. Uh, playing defense is unfortunately useless as well. Um, so I did just uh, just a few attacks here, and yeah, I'm losing HP quickly. And again, I got the omniscience with uh, no energy to play it. Another 12 HP lost. At least next turn, the orbs should be enough to kill. Um, I should have realized that and not worried about any attacks, but yeah, fine. 
Here I got Frozen Egg, which I had before whenever you had a power card into your deck upgraded. And here I was considering Vault or Deva form. And uh, yeah, both of them are really good options. Uh, I think I mentioned that yesterday. A few people, actually, Malzan had a lot of fun with the Deva form. So I picked it up. Yeah, why not? Let's grab the Deva form. And also, that means that in this, well, actually, here I got Sundial. But then after this elite fight, I last time got uh, the um, Bottle Tornado, and I didn't really have a good power. Um, so now I at least have a Deva form. And also, having Deva form show up on turn one against the Lego Balloon is a great sign. So I can gain some energy here. And then here I got the Agate, which is not useful. But I can do Discovery and then maybe a huge Transmutation there. I got Meteor Strike from Discovery. That's great. Yeah, even more energy. And then Transmutation gives me a lot of cards, including the Panache, Thinking Ahead, uh, which allows me to, I don't remember, put the Defend back. That was probably not the best idea. I guess I was going to draw it with the Finesse and Flash of Seal anyway, so it's fine. Panache dealt 10 damage there. Okay. And then here I have 18 incoming and a lot of energy. So I played the Finesse and Defend. And then all the cards before playing Transportation, which triggered the Panache once, and then I got another Panache. So next time I play enough cards, it will deal 20 damage. And I did have a lot of cards, and then I can just do Flash of Steel and Swift Strike for a kill. Beautiful. So here I got Bottle Tornado, and then let's first take the Power Potion, which I'll I remove the Fire Potion I spent money for. And then here, Multic has a Rainbow Amplify. I was considering the Amplify because I am hoping to get more powers, uh, but ultimately I think Rainbow is better because it does give me a Frost Drop, and also it gives me a chance of getting Overkill with the Dark Orb. So I took that. And then last time I had the Bottle Tornado, I only had Sadistic Nature as my power in my deck. And this time, though, I have the Deva Form, and I think it makes much more sense to put Deva Form in the opening hand. All right, then I'm going straight on to get two more elites. Here at a rest site, I have to first upgrade the omniscience to make it actually, um, to, to make me able to play it. Otherwise, I just don't have the energy. Pretty much never will have the energy. And here I started with aggregate first to gain energy and then Deva form, and I can play everything else in my hand, which includes three strikes. Okay. I still have the fire push. I was hovering over that, thinking if I should use it. Unfortunately, here I cannot defend unless the discovery gives me a defensive card. It did not. I was thinking of taking multicast, but unfortunately, that only will deal uh, 8 times 3, 24 damage. That's not going to be enough. Uh, so I figured, actually, did I still take it? Yeah, I still took it. Okay, fine. Let's do Consecrate, Ball Lightning. And then, yeah, I did multicast to deal in a bit of damage, but unfortunately, I needed one, 10 more HP. I drank the Colorless Potion, hoping to give me something that deals enough damage, but no, unfortunately, I got the Blind. And then I figure I'll save the uh, Fire Potion for later, if there's no way for me to defend here anyway. And then here, I mean, obviously, I can do so this signature. I played the Rainbow first, as well as a Zap. Bowling Bash is one short, right? Because the Orb will deal three damage. I'll have one left. There's nothing I can do. So here, I had to throw the Fire Potion after all. Here we got Giri, you can gain strength the rest sites up to three times, and then dispose a push, and then there was a seek off, which I definitely have to take. That's a really great card. I started with the omniscience and Deva form here, so I have to choose between them. Let's see what choice I made there. I'm trying to think. I can't really think anything good with the omniscience to duplicate, I assume. Um, no, never mind. I still duplicated it, and I guess I got the agate. Oh, that was actually really smart. Okay, passed me, did really well. Okay, so duplicate the agate, was able to still play the div form, and then only took three damage here. I do have to be careful because I only have nine HP left. Uh, here I can dual cast to be fully defended. Let's also do finesse and then play all the attacks I have. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, the orb is enough to kill next turn. I can just do a consecrate. Beautiful. All right, uh, got my gold back. Protect, hologram, consecrate. I think I need a defensive card, like a strong defensive card with the protect, especially for the upcoming boss. Here I got the sentries, and unfortunately, there's nothing I can do turn, on turn one. I only have one defend, and the potions are unlikely to help me, unless I get a buffer, which seems unlikely. So I think I, I do want to save that power potion for later. I do have the explosive potion, but that's not going to be enough either. So I played the defend because actually, without it, I would be dead. Let's also do dual cast, and then uh, yeah, I think I played the strike there. Uh, let's also throw the Explosive Potion, and I just need to deal 8 more damage to kill one of them, but I also have to defend against another 9. Uh, so here, I think I played the Finesse and then Discovery. I'm hoping to get something amazing out of it. Ooh, there's actually Omniscience. Okay. I could Omniscience... Actually, do I have a good um, defensive card to Omniscience? Not really. Omniscience the aggregate is not going to be super useful. Actually, no, it will give me a total of 6 energy. Yep, alright. And then, uh, yeah, Discovery... Judgment was really good here because it would allow me to kill the front line. Actually, I had enough to... I was able to kill the backliner too. So that way I keep the weaker one alive. And I still have to play the Protect because there's a chance that the Lightning Orb will not hit the front the frontliner, in which case I will die. Unfortunately, the Lightning Orb did hit the frontliner, but there's nothing I could have... Uh, well, there's no way for me to predict that, right? Here, I did say this thing, Nature, Defend, and then Transmutation. The Bomb is great. I obviously will still take two damage here, but I think that's fine. And then here I can just play two strikes to kill. All right, 
Okay, so I got through this. We had Kunai every time we played three attacks in a single turn, gained one dexterity. So that was actually very useful for a lot of people yesterday. And then Vault, Scrawl, or Brilliance. I think I took the Vault here. Scrawl would have been useful too, but I think Vault is more important at the moment. Here I healed just because I was worried that I had no chance of perfecting the Act One Moss. Uh, again, starting off with the Form and Omniscience is unfortunate. I here drank the Power Potion and I decided correctly, I think, to take the Defragment because I thought it might come down to getting a little bit more block with the Frost Orbs. I also still have the Protect in my opening hand, which or in my uh, hand, I guess, innately. Or not innately, retained, which is good. Played the, uh, played the Aggregate there and then Cold Snap. Uh, that should give me a Frost Orb. Finesse. And uh, is there anything good I can seek here? I could seek the Vault. Actually, yeah, I think I decided to do that. To do that, yeah, because that way I don't have to worry about defending this turn, and I can try to deal some damage next turn. Um, and actually, I only need not too much. There's sadistic nature, bowling mash, and then rainbow would evoke the front orb, and then it guarantees to kill. And I can oh, to transform, not kill. And that way, I still have to protect for another turn where I get attacked. Uh, here, I can dual cast the the. Uh, what do you call it? Frost Orb for 12 block. That would be enough. Or I can just double defend that also enough and then play Transportation. I did get Mind Blast, but that's unfortunately a little useless in this deck. Um, it was Secret Technique. I could grab a skill, but I don't have any skills in my draw pile. So I think I just did Thinking Ahead twice. And I think I was hoping to put the Mind Blast back so I can play it next turn uh, after the reshuffle. I didn't realize that I didn't have that many decks in my uh, that many cards in my deck left. So the Mind Blast, even with the reshuffle, is just not that powerful. I was reviewing what I could play with the Omniscience. Um, I thought maybe I have the energy. Maybe I'll omniscience the transmutation. That would give me a lot of cards. I do need to defend though, so I have to play the protect. And the protect alone is not enough, so it has to be protect and defend. And then I think, uh, well, actually, then omnisciencing the transmutation only gives me two cards. Yeah, I guess that's not bad. I got the metamorphosis, which gives me gives me a zero cost sense of time, which is not bad. And then I can do bowling mash as one attack. All right. And then here I have 20 incoming. There's a Sash Root that I can use to bring it down to 12. There's a Sands of Time. And actually, I can transform with the uh, Strike and Claw. Actually, I can also do the Zap for... Uh, well, no, I think I didn't play the Zap because I wanted to keep my Frost Orb. Yeah, I think that would be better. And then here I can double defend to be full. Actually, I can play everything and uh, not have to worry about taking any damage here. All right. Another 16. Yeah, this is a problem, right? I do have Secret Technique, which would grab me a skill. Unfortunately, I only have the Agate, which is very useless. I could do Dual Cast, but that's only 12 block. Even if I... And actually, I don't have enough damage to kill with the Dark Orb either, right? So Cold Sign would give me another Frost Orb, but I would have to take 3 damage to actually play it. And yeah, so I, I was a little desperate here. I just played everything I had. And unfortunately, that still was not enough. Which is a shame, because I think, I think this might have been my last turn. Uh, my second to last turn. This is the turn where I think I should be able to kill... I have my blast, uh, sash whip, claw, bowling mash, and then the orbs are enough to kill. So I just missed the perfect here by one turn, which is a shame. I did a, a distilled chaos potion, and here I thought of taking mass reality because I have the transportations and the discovery. And uh, yeah, I think it it's not usually something I'll take. I don't want Deus Ex Machina. I don't want really hyper beam. Hyper beam. I do rely on focus a lot, so I don't really want that. So I decided to take the mass reality. And here I was offered the Sneko Eye, which means that my upgrade on the Omniscience was not that useful. But still, I think with the Deva Form and a bunch of other high-cost cards, and I'm planning to get more high-cost cards with the purple and blue cards, so I think Sneko Eye is the best choice there. All right, on to Act 2. Okay, so here I was reviewing the path. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, multiple four lead path. Actually, there are two leads at the end, and then I can decide how to get to those two leads. I can either go in the left or the middle, uh, so those two elites will give me two question mark groups. Up until that point, if I go there on the left, I'll just see two. If I go in the middle, I'll see a total of one, two, three, four, then two elites, then a fifth question mark room. So a total of uh, five question mark rooms plus two more after the two elites. So yeah, that's seven question mark rooms, which is great. Here I start off with the aggregate and then deva form. I am playing the protect to be full of defendant and transportation. Yeah, it doesn't give me anything amazing. Fine. Yeah, transportation, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. There's a, a cheap omniscience. Uh, I just don't know what to omniscience, though. Uh, I probably should play rainbow. Okay, fine. I did omniscience. What did I omniscience here? Yeah, ball lightning. That's, I mean, you know, if I have to choose, might as well do that. And I played the rainbow, and then I could do vault. Okay. And then master reality, I should probably play that. All right. Uh, should I do transportation? Okay, there's a free finesse. Yeah, and then there's a transportation with Drunch of upgraded cards, including the panacea, deep breath. Sorry, not the panacea, panache. Right. Okay. 
I was actually kind of excited here because so far the Act 2, Act 1 was not that great, but Act 2 was going pretty well. And uh, yeah, so I, I hope I was hoping that maybe the deck just needed something and I was able to get that something. But in retrospect, I did need some luck still. Here I got some somewhat useless cards. Um, because of Snake Eye, having a bunch of zero cost cards is not that great. I was offered the Bites here, which I rejected because I was going for Highlander. And then here I was offered the Apparition, which I also had to reject. But if somebody decides to go for Collector Monsters, it is possible to get at least two out of those two events. Here I'm able to choose a card. I was hoping to get a high cost cards, but no, there are no two or three cost cards offered here. Only zero and one cost cards. Obviously, I don't want to take a zero cost card. I was debating whether I should take Hello World. It would make my opening hand a little weaker. Um, and then I thought maybe the boot sequence to have some block on turn one. And then I end up with the Deceive Reality because I think that is both some good block and also with the Master Reality, it would give me some extra block that way. All right, here, look at that. A free Diva form and a free Omniscience. That's really good. I still wasn't sure what to Omniscience. Um, I figured I'll just Omniscience. Well, I guess I could do Aga to gain a lot of energy. Or Transportation. Yeah, let's do Transportation then. All right, so I got six cards there. One, uh, I didn't have enough space in my hand, so I couldn't play one of them. I just played everything I was offered there, including a Zap and uh, an Evaluate and Deceive Reality. Now, Evaluate is not that great with Sneko because it does cost zero, but when you draw it, it might get a randomized cost. I did get rid of the second Transportation because I figured I didn't need it. But I did play Mayhem, right? So that plays something. Agate would give me three energy, but cost two. I mean, it's net positive, but not that useful. Uh, Discovery gives me probably Deceive Reality, yeah, just to be safe. Okay. And then I should probably do Rainbow. Uh, safety and Rainbow, all right? Now we have Fully Defended, and I still have a Safety for next turn. Okay. And then here I got a Master Reality played for free. There's a Weave. I could just do Vault, but maybe I'll play Flying Sleeves first, and then I have to do Vault, all right? And then here, uh, what was that? I think it was another strike. Let's do Sadistic Nature. Actually, no. Dual cast first. Sadistic Nature is somewhat useless here, especially if the enemy has Artifact. And then here I seeked. I was hoping to seek a good attack card. Fear No Evil, I guess, works. And then I just need a little bit of damage. Inside gives me a strike, which is enough. Beautiful. All right, here I got a Fear Potion, Scrape, Leaper, Prostrate. I think I'll take the Scrape. In the past, I wasn't sure if Scrape was going to work with Snake Eye. But yeah, I have confirmed it today that... Uh, you draw cards, they are randomized. If any of the cards cost zero, then Scrape decides to keep them. So it is pretty useful with Snake Oil. Uh, here, Deva form is pretty cheap. I'm luckily not being attacked. There is a Scrape, and you can sort of see once I play it that it will draw a bunch of cards with randomized costs. And if anything costs zero, I did throw the vulnerability potion in case I wasn't able to draw anything that's useful. I did want to get rid of one of the minions at least. And here, the Discovery gives me multicast bias condition Tempest. I decided to take the bias condition just because I'm hoping to finish the fight soon. And then, unfortunately, uh, this, the backline decided to attack me. Still have a Distill Chaos. I also have a Vault. So I did Strike, Zap, def No, I, I don't need Defend. I did Transportation. I can do Panacea. Uh, did I do Deep Breath? I did do Deep Breath. That gives me energy with the Sundial. Um, and then I can play two Defensive cards, and then let's do Vault. All right. And then here, uh, there's a Deceive Reality, but that, unfortunately, alone is not enough. It's only 16. I need 27, so I need another 11 block. There's a Distal Chaos Potion, which played, um, I guess, that was a Seek, which gives me an Omniscience and an Aggregate. And then with the Omniscience, I can just duplicate a Defensive card, and I think I chose that to be... Uh, you know, I didn't need to du duplicate the Protect. I could have duplicated a Defend as well, right? But yeah, it's fine. I'm, a, I'm also able to play the Ball Lightning... Right, I also played the Bowling Bash, and then I was able to kill the minion with a strike, and then Transformation gave, gave me a zero-cost Apotheosis, which is great to have. Also, the only time today where I got Apotheosis from Transportation, but yeah, it's a great thing to have. Um, and there, Rainbow, Consecrate, Scrape, which gives me a zero-cost strike, and I have a two-cost strike, and that is enough to kill. All right, so I perfect this one, had to use my potions, and I also got Tungsten Art, which is great. Whenever you lose HP, lose one less. That also would have made the Apparitions much better if I decided to take them. Here, I figured Deus Ex Machina might be good because I have the Master Real, um, I didn't really need energy, but it's a nice thing to have. All right, there, I start off with the Aggregate again and Diva Form. I luckily realized that I should play the Aggregate first and then Deceive Reality. And I figured I could do Vault um, or I can do Bowling Bash first. Um, and yeah, I think I, I should do Vault here uh, because there's no reason not to. Oh, no. All right, never mind. I decided to fully defend and then I got the thinking ahead to put the Vault back. That's actually, all right, smart in retrospect. Okay. Because now I have the Vault, um, and then I also have the Omniscience. I can play that and the Vault. I wasn't sure what to Omniscience. I figured I could Omniscience something like the Rainbow. I did have a free dual cast. Let's play that first, and then Omniscience Rainbow. Okay, good. And then I could do Vault. I could also fully defend with the Protect, right? So maybe I don't need to play the Vault, but no, I decided to play the Vault after all. 
And then here I did get the upgrade of miracles. I got discovery, which gives me a reinforced body to free out of the equilibrium. I take the, took the equilibrium to be fully defended. And that way I can also save my hand for next turn. Here I got a transportation. Uh, I played the miracle first or scrape first. No, I think I did scrape first. All right. Got a free zap. And then um, did I play the miracle? I was trying to debate. I think it's better to save the miracle. Yep. So I take the transportation first. And then if I want, I can still play the miracle. Actually, I don't need much damage. Just 33 damage minus the three. So just 30 really. Um, there's an equilibrium again, which allows me to be fully defended. Ball lightning. I... Actually, yeah, the ball lightning, uh, I think if I played the zap, the dark orb would have been enough to kill. So, yeah, I think I was a little too careful there. All right, uh, Sash would follow up or leap. I decided to take uh, the leap just to have another good defensive card. Uh, later on, I will take a follow up, but I don't think it was super necessary at the moment. You have 12 incoming. I do have the tungsten rod and evaluate and defend and, uh, by themselves as 11 with tungsten rod. That's enough. I played the scrape, but I only got a zero cost strike. Uh, unfortunately, it does mean that I won't be able to play the day of form, which is fine. I also was trying to think maybe if I triggered Kunai, but then I realized that I can just play Defend and Evaluate, and with the Tungst Rod, that'll be enough. Okay. All right, so fully Defended there. 18 incoming. Um, there's Leap, Defend, a 2-0 cost Defense, and a Leap. That should be fine. I did play Rainbow first. Okay. And then, yeah, it's a shame. Whenever I don't play Deva Form, it makes things much harder. Um, so, yeah, I think I Leap, Double Defend, and then I can either do uh, Master Reality, Seek, or Strike. I did do the Master Reality because I figured I do create a bunch of cards, so it might be good to have those be upgraded. So here I, I have 21 incoming, and the Protect alone is not enough, so I played the Zap there, and then I Risk Transportation. It luckily did give me a Panic Button. Now, that is a risk because I still have to deal a lot of damage next turn. So I was able to get a lot of good zero cost cards with the Chrysalis there. So yeah, Panic Button allows me to be fully defended. I still need to deal 100 damage next turn, and I won't be able to play a defensive card. I do have the Orb, so that does give me some block. There's also a Vault, which I considered Omnisciencing, but then I figured, no, um, there's also a Blasphemy. I was trying to think, if I play Blasphemy, I'll get a lot of energy. The problem is I only have the Ball Lightning as my uh, offensive card, so that'll be just 21 damage, and that's not nearly enough. I also don't really have any def uh, offensive cards coming up. I think my deck is actually lacking defenses, or sorry, offenses. So then as I was debating what to do, I do have two upgraded Miracles, which should help me with my energy situation. So if I do rainbow, it does give me a little bit extra block, but not quite enough. Um, so yeah, let's just see what happens. Uh, I played the miracle, okay. And then uh, I should definitely do the ball lightning. I did rainbow, okay. Then ball lightning, that gets the dark rope up, or the frost rope up front. Then transmutation gives me things like discovery, which gives me another omniscience. And I mean, I do have one in my uh, hand, but those omniscience would be zero cost. So I could double play two things, which might be worth it. So I think after thinking about it for a long time, I decided to take it. While my past me decides what to do with the omniscience, um, I should mention it's 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 always a little frustrating when you forget to uh, you know record your voice. And uh, yeah, luckily my voice is actually fine. Usually I don't do well after speaking for yeah basically two hours. Spoiler: this run did end up taking about an hour. Um, but yeah, so I think the right strategy would be to take the omniscience, and then uh, you know I do have the deep breath, which gives me which gives me energy with the sundial, and then now I have uh, I can omniscience anything in my deck. I first was able to grab, actually I should I it makes sense to grab the ball lightning because then I can still play blasphemy and deal a lot of damage, right? I actually grabbed the scrape instead. Interesting. All right, so I played miracle then blasphemy that gives me a bunch of energy. Now scrape deals thirty damage, and I just need one good attack card. I guess it doesn't matter, right? Because then I can omniscience any good attack card. So either a strike or um bowling bash yeah that's enough beautiful so i got a little lucky there with the panic button we also got horn cleat at the start of your second turn gained 14 block alpha ragnarok or blasphemy i was considering blasphemy but i think ragnarok with sneko is really good i just wish i had, had more strength we got strike dummy cards containing strike deal three additional damage and then the next question mark room is the uh, event which might give me necronomic curse but no unfortunately it gave me nero's codex at the end of your turn you may shuffle one of three random carless uh, random cards into your hand now unfortunately that does mean it makes it a little harder to finish on time and spoiler alert i did miss the one hour threshold just by i think 50 something seconds all right so here again i have diva from ragnarok they are both very expensive so i can't play both i did play zap evaluate that is not enough i had to hope transportation to give me something gave me dark shackles which is like the best thing it could have given me that right because i don't think there's any other colors cards that would have allowed me to gain 12 block um but yeah uh, dark shackles allowed me to be fully defended here i have to admit transportation did in a few turns really save me 
Right here, I think it's important to get rid of at least one minion. I do have the bomb that will trigger next turn, but it's easy to tr uh, to get rid of one minion there. Transmutation this time didn't give me anything amazing, but I can do finesse and then secret weapon to grab something. Yes, uh, consecrate is good. Oh, never mind. I took the scrape. Ooh, there's the master reality I would like to play there. Yep. And then, yeah, I think here I can wait. Battle him is interesting because I have master reality, so it gives me a smite, an upgraded smite every turn. That's actually... Also, one of the reasons I picked up the Master of Reality, because I wanted to grab a battle him. I wasn't offered one, though. Spoiler again. All right, so here I have to... I don't have to kill the Gremlin Wizard, because I do have the uh, bomb. But unfortunately, the orbs did kill it, which is fine. And then here I got Wave the Hand, uh, Consecrate, Seek. Um, I don't think it makes any sense to Seek the Agate. I also don't have, really have any energy left. So, yeah, I guess it doesn't... I probably shouldn't have played that Seek in the first place. There's another Ragnarok, which should hopefully deal a good amount of damage. And thanks to Master Reality, it is pre-upgraded. Here I have 27 incoming. I do also have the Vault and the Agate, which gives me a lot of energy. I have two Ragnaroks, which I can play both of them. Okay. And then I think I should just focus on the backliner because I have a Smite. I have a Vault here, which guarantees that I'll be able to finish the turn without taking any damage. And then I was thinking of playing the Ball Lightning, but that would not have guaranteed a kill. Whereas this way, I just finish my turn, get another Smite, and then kill, can kill with that. Okay. Alright, so um, let's see what I got here. I've got Matryoshka, the next two known bus chests you open contain two relics. I'm supposed to duplication push, which is great. And then Electrodynamics is pre upgraded thanks to the Frozen Egg, and it will help me in AoE fights. So I did take it, and I think that was a good decision. Here I get to upgrade a card for free, and that um, I was considering the Ragnarok. I should have probably upgraded the, the Seek. I didn't do it. I ended up upgrading the Ragnarok. In retrospect, I think the Seek upgrade would have been much better. Yeah, I got the Book of Stabbing again. Um, I do have the Agate, which gives me enough energy to play the Deva form. Unfortunately, I will still have trouble defending. There's not much I can do about that. I Even if I duplicate the defend, it's not going to be enough, right? So I think I have to risk play, uh, to, risk to play the Transmutation and hope it gives me something good. Oh, no, wait. I seek the Vault. Okay, that was actually smarter. Yeah, so that way I can delay for next turn. Next turn, I do have the Home Cleat active. Here, I wasn't sure what to pick. Let's just pick the Rainbow. I guess if, if I'm in a rush, I can just pick rare cards. So here, thanks to Home Cleat, I'm fully defended. I can't play Rainbow. But unfortunately, not having extra energy from Deva form does make this a little difficult. I didn't take the Compile Driver. Why didn't I take it? Because I had three different uh, orbs already. Here there's a free Master Reality, a free Bowling Bash, and a free Omniscience. Um, I need to defend against 18, though. Um, I guess I can Omniscience the Protect. That would be enough. Or the Leap, actually. That way I can save the Protect for later. Yeah, against 18, I mean, Leap would have been better. Uh, I could also do... No, I can't do Evaluate. I actually, Deceive Reality. That's smarter. Yeah, yeah all right. Pass Me was very smart, because that way I can still play a Safety, be fully defended, and then I will still have a Safety for the next turn. Yeah, so I was actually really smart. Okay. Go for that Heat Sinks, Fear No Evil. I think I picked up Heat Sinks. I don't know. I figured maybe I can gain uh, some sort of combo modifier, but would have been difficult. Here, I got the Miracles to help me with energy. There's also Ragnarok. There's a free Protect. That alone is not enough, but together with the Leap, it is enough. All right. That way, I still will save the safety for later. Then do Ragnarok. I can do uh, two strikes here. And then, yeah, just hope for the best. There's an Alpha, which I only have five cards in my drop pile. So if I play it now... Actually, no, if I take it now, I skipped it because if I took the Alpha now, I would have... Oh, no, mind, I took it. I forgot that the Sneko I will draw me seven cards, so I reshuffled. So Alpha will give me a beta, but it's going to take forever to draw to it. Yeah, I do have the Safety for 16 and then Defend for... No, Safety is 17. And Defend is uh, uh, 6, so that with the Frost Drop is enough. Yeah, I got the Foreign Influence, which thanks to Master Reality was upgraded. And then it gives me something that is also upgraded and zero cost. Unfortunately, I didn't get out of uh, anything out of it, though. There's a Ragnarok for 36 damage. I should definitely play that. And then I forgot about the fact that I also have Thorns, and the Thorns will deal enough damage to kill there. Okay, yeah, that was an unexpected win for me. We got Bag of Marvels at the Starvage Combat, apply one vulnerable to all enemies, and then Hyper Beam Alpha Rainbow. I already have the Rainbow, I don't want Hyper Beam, so I decided to take the Alpha here. I was hoping to get Overkill that way too. Alright, there's a Zero Cost Deva form, definitely gonna play that, and then Electrodynamics, and yeah, I think that's a good uh, start there. And then I did pick up the Vault, especially against the Sneko, it might be useful. Actually, generally, Vault is a pretty good card, right? 15 incoming, there's the Aggregate, which is uh, which gives me a bunch of energy back, so I should definitely play that. Uh, Rainbow is interesting. There's also Transportation. I don't think I need the Vault here, because I'm... Actually, with Rainbow, I'm fully defended, so I definitely don't need the Vault. So I did the Strike, and then Transportation for Sadistic Nature, Jack of All Trades, Finesse, and then Thinking Head. I think I, sh I should have put the Master Reality back, because then there might be a chance for me to play it. Now, I guess having a Vault is also not a bad idea to be able to just delay... Yeah, there's a Ragnarok that can play for free. Uh, not for free, but for very cheap. And then I only need 10 damage. Conclude is enough. Beautiful. 
All right, evaluate hologram or sweeping beam. Uh, so I already have the value between hologram and sweeping beam. I figured I'll take the hologram so I can bring back some nice zero cost cards back. Here's the baiting if I should upgrade something or lift. And I didn't think there's anything that was super important to upgrade. So I think gaining the extra strength, especially with the Ragnarok in the deck, might be better. All right, here, unfortunately, I'm starting off with Deva Form and Alpha, and both of them are ex too expensive to play together. I did decide to play the Deva Form because I think in this fight, having enough energy is important. Empty Body Consumer Collect. I took the Empty Body for a defensive option because I was worried that next turn I will only have the 14. Luckily, the minions decided not to attack me. All right, I also had the Vault, but because I was fully defended, I definitely didn't want to play it now. I had the very cheap Omniscient, so I was trying to debate what to play it with. I decided to play the Electrodynamics because that will deal a lot of damage to the minions, and I probably wouldn't have to worry about them uh, next turn at least and I also played another zap yeah so in two turns all the minions are dead I did play the empty body just for fun cut through fate scraper empty mind cut through fate is pretty good here now the minions took some good cards the Oxic magna is a great card and then the other one was the master reality I would like to get the master reality back the Oxic magna if I get it back it won't, won't trigger because it only triggers when you draw it not when you get it back so um, yeah I think I played a defend hologram I, I was hoping to get a good zero cost card but I realized I didn't have any good zero cost cards other than the bowling bash which is a pretty good card I kept the back down to get the master reality I think that was important and then uh, I guess I should do Ragnarok right yeah let's definitely do Ragnarok also got the Dose 6 Machina back, which didn't trigger, unfortunately. Um, I did play Transportation, which gave me, gave me a Seeker Technique and a Seeker Weapon. I don't think I really needed them. I guess with Seeker Technique, I should have played that and realized that having a Protect would be good. Okay. And Seeker Weapon, I mean, I guess I can do Consecrate because I have zero energy. Okay. I decided to take a Worship here, and I figured because it's upgraded, I might try to enter Divinity and be able to kill that way. Uh, so there is a leap and protect, which is enough. Actually, um, I did a strike while lightning instead of signature first and, uh, hoped that scrape would give me something amazing. Played the worship there and then evaluate and protect was also enough. So I didn't need to play the leap. Uh, it doesn't really matter though, right? Actually, wait, evaluate and leap is enough. Thanks to the, uh, thanks to the rod, right? So that way I can still save the protect for later. Here I took the spirit shield, but all for one would have been much better. I think it would have allowed me to get some zero cost cards back. I didn't really need spirit shield this turn, which is fine. Uh, here I played Rainbow Strike, uh, hope that the inside would give me a good attack. I did Cut Through Fade, um, and then, yeah, I was hoping that next turn I'll have lots of um, lots of defensive options. Uh, there's also a Worship that I could bring back and play. Unfortunately, I didn't have any attacks in my hand, so getting the Worship was a little unnecessary. Instead, I did Alpha. I was hoping for the best there. Scrape gave me and discarded the Worship again, and then there's also Vault which allowed me to get an extra turn. Now, because I played the Alpha, I was hoping to get the Beta, and I did. There's also a Seek there. Um, so I was able to Seek the Omega and then just play that. So that will deal, because it's upgraded, 60 damage at the end of this turn and then another 60 damage at the end of next turn. So I really didn't need to play any of the other cards. I guess there's a small hope I might be able to get an Omniscience. Actually, no, it was too late for the Omniscience. That would be a great way to get uh, Overkill omniscience the um, the Omega. All right, so perfected this uh, boss. Very happy with that. We've got a Colorless Potion, Omniscience, Wish, and Ragnarok because I'm going for the Highlander modifier. And I actually remembered here I have to remove a transportation. I decided to take the Wish. And then here between Calling Bell and Black Star, I first wanted to take Calling Bell, but there's no chance for me to get Curses at this point. And Calling Bell would give me three extra relics, while Black Star will give me the number of extra relics uh, as I have Elites on Act 4. And I was really hoping to get either four or even five Elites on Act 4. And with Big Game Hunter, it's almost guaranteed that we have at least three. Sometimes you get three, but yeah. So basically, effectively, uh, Bell and Black Star would give me uh, the same number of uh, extra relics, but Bell, uh, sorry, Black Star would give me, uh, well, is likely going to give me more. And then here you see there is a four elite path. I also th thought that maybe if I got wing boots from the Bell, that would have been better, but I don't think that would have happened. Well, actually, I know in retrospect that that wouldn't happen. So I was reviewing the path here. Um, I think there are multiple two elite paths early on and later on. So I have to hit one of those. If I start on the left, I think I got uh, one more question mark room than if I started on the right. And then towards the end, there was a path with two more question mark rooms. So that's a total of four if I start on the left and then turn right. Now, there's also a shop uh, between the first two question mark, uh, for, sorry, first two elites. That would allow me to remove the transportation and uh, ensure that I can get Highlander. All right, so let's start on the left here. All right, I got the Orb Walker here. And because I have Alpha, I was hoping to maybe do something like a Deva Form Alpha, seek the Beta. And then um, I was hoping to, because I hadn't drawn the Omniscience yet, I was hoping to Omniscience the Omega. That would give me Overkill. Uh, and I was starting to worry about that because I hadn't had an opportunity to get Overkill yet. This turn I'm also fully defended thanks to the, um, I forgot the name of the Relic, thanks to the Horn Cleat there. All right. 
And then here, I guess I could, I definitely should do Master Reality. It's pretty useful. There's also a very cheap Electrodynamics and a Hologram. The Hologram won't give me anything back though, so I'm not sure if that was very useful. Oh, did I just, oh, see, that was a misplay. I'm glad I reviewed it. Should have played the Electrodynamics. I had the energy. There's the Omega. Unfortunately, I drew it before I got the Omniscience, which is a shame because it means I won't get uh, double damage there. I can fully defend here, and then I should just finish my turn because, I mean, if I, yeah, I'm just having fun here. I could just beat this up and, uh, yeah, yeah, this is why I also missed the one-hour mark, right? Because I think I was wasting a lot of time. All right, got a Gambler Spree, which is useful. Follow-up, just like your Scrape. Uh, I already had the Scrape, and I don't think I need Just Lucky, so I took the follow-up here. Here, I got the True Normality event, and I, was, I took it because it does give you extra gold. Now, unfortunately, it does mean now I will have two duplicates, and I was really hoping I can figure out a way to remove both of them. Um, I was hoping that maybe I'll get an event that allows me to remove one. Also, having Normalities is always unfortunate and annoying. Let's start with Diva from here. Again, played the Alpha, hoping to get the Beta Omega Omniscience combination. There was an Omniscience there that I could use to Omniscience. Well, no, Omnisciencing the Beta was unnecessary. So, Omniscience the Omniscience I had, then Omniscience the Wish, and then I think I did the uh, Electrodynamics, right? That would allow me to deal a lot of damage. Now, if I really wanted to, I could have delayed the fight, kept the Backliner alive, and tried to get that Omniscience, um, Omniscience Omega combination going. But yeah, unfortunately, I was too impatient with that. Here, I was hoping to gain a little bit of block, and I got the third eye, which was exactly enough. Good. And then I skipped that one because I think the orbs were guaranteed to kill next turn. Uh, so I didn't really need to worry about things. Um, I think I just end my turn here. All right. So here, I got boot sequence. Go for the extra tranquility. Because I'm a little worried on turn one with block, I decided to take the boot sequence, even though it's zero cost card. And then here, I risked and got all three cards. Um, yeah, I didn't see anything useful here. Uh, there was two flashes of steel, um, so I have to pick what to take. I also already have a sadistic nature, so I can't take that. So here, I decided to take the mayhem, and then I will take the flash of steel in the third uh, card choice. And here, I wasn't sure. Dramatic entrance is fine, but it is an eight, and it's a zero cost card. I did decide to take it just to have have a little bit of extra damage and then flash of steel there okay and here i got the jaw worms um this is where i realized that act two was fairly easy act three is getting harder again uh so the deva form is expensive and i don't have extra energy right so if i want to play it um i will have damage if i don't want to play it i uh i will have trouble with energy going forward all right so i'm taking three damage here and then 17 incoming, uh, and there's the normality, which is going to be annoying. I do have a gamma sprue. I took a cool headed there. I also have a vault, so I think the best thing. Oh, I can't. I don't have the energy to master reality in the vault, so I have to do the um, ball lightning and then do the vault. I took car reality, hoping that would be enough to deal damage soon. And there's another normality. If I play the omniscience, oh, actually I have mayhem, right? So that already played one card. So omnisciencing the wish would only play the wish once more, not twice, because normality prevents the fourth card to be played or the second instance of the um, of the wish here i got a devotion not sure why i think i was trying to rush it because i don't think it was super important what i picked there i could have probably just skipped it all right there was a free defend i have 34 incoming uh i have two more free defense there's also a free hologram um i the alpha is a little too expensive i was hoping to get something good to hologram i did see an electrodynamics which might be good in this particular fight it does mean though i will take uh what is that 16 damage here no, um, 15, right, thanks to the Tanks and Rod. All right, and I think this really shows what happens when you don't have the debuff form active because the lack of energy is really starting to hurt me, especially with a lot of cards that require a lot of energy. Well, and sometimes getting unlucky with the Snake I Relic. All right, so here I have Bowling Bash. That is enough to kill one of them, and then the Orbs are enough to kill the other one. All right, Crescendo Double Energy Charge Battery. I figured sometimes I need more energy, so let's take the Double Energy there. And here I got the Reptomancer. Um, so the, again, the Deva form is expensive, so I can't play that. I also have Boot Sequence, which helps me a little bit. I figure I can do Strike and follow up to kill one of the minions. All right, and then the uh, Boot Sequence would be enough, so then I still have the energy to play the Deva form. And then I figured I'd pick up Judgment that would help against the minions. Now, unfortunately, on turn two, everybody is attacking me, and I have the Normality, so there's not much I can do. I do have the Judgment that is enough to kill one of the minions. I also have Bully Mash that's enough to kill another one. I have enough. I have to kill the backliner, otherwise that's way too much damage. I figured I'll try to see if the colorless potion gives me anything amazing. And I did see a forethought. Now, I didn't really need any of those, but forethought allows me to get rid of the normality, and that allows me to play a few more cards. So I kill. I can kill one of them with the judgment, the other one with the bowling mesh. Unfortunately, I still have to defend against 30. I decided to try scrape first, hoping it would give me something good, but yeah, unfortunately, it still was not enough. And then um, I do have the strike. That's not enough. I was considering maybe drinking the, the duplication push, but... I need a defensive card to really duplicate it, so there's nothing I could have done there. 
All right, so here um, the strike alone is not enough, right? It has to be judgment, and then I can place the strike on the Eruptomancer. Wallop would have been great. If I had that, I would have considered duplicating that. Uh, here I have Wish and Ragnarok. I think it's more important to play the Ragnarok. The Sea of Reality is also not a bad idea to gain a block card for next turn. And yeah, I should have played the Transmutation. I had one energy. Yeah, this is kind of nice to review my footage. I can uh, sort of point out mistakes. All right, there's a double energy that I should definitely do because it's free. The Seek is too expensive. I was maybe th thinking of seeking the Aggregate. But no, I have to play double energy. And then Wallop gives me a good amount of block. Let's do that. Um, safety is also pretty useful. Um, I need to... Wait, uh, the strike alone is not enough to kill the backliner. Uh, what did I seek here? I could seek the buffer, right? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I could also consider seeking the vault, but buffer is better. Um, and now with the zap strike and hoping to get something good... Yeah, Dramatic Entrance actually allows me to kill the backliner with the transportation. And then Flash of Steel allows me to get a normality, which I don't have to worry about this turn anymore. I'm losing one buffer. I still have one buffer left, which is actually really nice. So I have 30 incoming. I know that I put back a normality into the bottom of a dropout. So if I play the vault, I won't be able to play anything else. Here, I once again took the worship. And then um, I did Flash of Steel. There's a Protect, which is great. I could do Alpha here, right? I, I think I might consider doing vault. And just get rid of the normality and get it over with. I first did Hologram. And I was trying to find something good zero cost. There's a worship, which I think I'll, I just won't play because then it'll stay in my hand. There's an Alpha Vault. And then next turn, I do have the buffer. And with the... Actually, I realized that with Protect and Safety, I do have enough to be fully defended. So I think I played uh, Beta, Protect and Safety, right? That would have been enough to be fully defended. would still allow me to keep the buffer for another turn. And then I still have the Omega and some faint hope of, uh, well, dealing a lot of damage with it. I also still have the Worship, which is great. Yeah, there's the Omega. Um, and I can obviously... Well, I wish for gold first. I can obviously keep the Worship for later. Although, Omega deals 60 damage, and then, uh, yeah, that's enough to kill. Beautiful. And Mercury Aglas at the start of your turn deals 3 damage to all enemies, and then Nunchaku every time play 10 attacks get extra energy. And then here I already have the Vault, don't want Hyper Beam, so I will take the Scrawl. Uh, so in this shop, I first remove the Normality, just to make sure I don't forget. Okay. And then I bought all the Relics, so, um, yeah, there's Ceramic Fish. When we add a card to deck, gain 9 gold. And turn up, you can long become frail as well as chemical X. The effect of your cost X cards are increased by two. In terms of cards, I already um, had. Well, actually, no, I already had to follow up. And th wait, did I have third eye? I don't. I sorted A to Z just to check. I did not have a third eye, so let's grab that. Okay. I wasn't sure about capacitor. I don't. I don't have a lot of orbs, so I figured capacitor is not super useful. There was a master of strategy, though. I should definitely take that. And then in terms of potions, I also figured I'd take a block potion that might be useful. And then I decided that's enough. And my real hope is that I can get another shop in a question mark room. But then I realized that there's a path on the left with two elites and a, and a shop instead of two question mark rooms. And the only reason I would take question mark rooms is to gain curses. And I'm not really planning to do that anymore. So I figured I'll just uh, go on the left there. All right. So here I played boot sequence defend and I got a buffer offered here, which is really nice to have against the giant head. I was also hoping to get combo at some point here. That's why playing the Deva from is really important. So here, Electrodynamics is pretty cheap. Um, I am worried about not being... Actually, no, no, mind. I have enough defense. I did get a wish back to allow me to gain more gold and then do Electrodynamics. I was very confident here. Okay, got the Compile Driver because I figured I will have enough energy with Deva form. I need more card draw to try to get combo. There's omniscience and a Double Energy. Double Energy doesn't give me that much block, uh, that much energy, only one extra energy. Trying to figure out what to omniscience. Omniscience and buffer would not have been a bad idea. I figured I could omniscience the um, aggregate and then play Double Energy, but then the problem with that is I don't have a lot of card draw. So I did Double Energy first. And then, um, yeah, I think Compile Draw would have been better to play here. Yep, okay, got Compile Draw. A Compile Driver, that was not enough, though. It didn't give me anything good. And then I played a few cards, Finesse, uh, and then I figured I'll do Third Eye. Because I have Chemical X, I can Omniscience the, um, I can omniscience the th Transmutation, and I have two of them. And I'm hoping to remove another one at the next shop. So I figured uh, this might be useful. Only ended up playing, uh, yeah, 13 cards there, so that was not quite enough. I did get Spirit Shield. That might be helpful for block. Okay. All right. So nine incoming. There's a Vault there. So I don't think... I think I thought I might have gotten combo in this turn, but the Vault might have ruined it, right? So let's count. Uh, this, actually, never mind. I have the Normality. So there's nothing I can do there. So I got a Chill here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because of the Normality, I think I did Rainbow and then Vault. 
Okay, so even though the time eater here, I wasn't sure what to take. I got a reinforced body. Even though the time eater shows the slow debuff at three, it's technically at zero because the vault resets that, right? For the combo modifier at least. But still, let's count. Maybe I did get combo after all. So there's a miracle buffer. That's really good to have. Unfortunately, the problem is I still don't have a lot of card draw. Uh, like water reprogram beam cell. I could have taken reprogram, but beam cell is fine too. I did have statistic nature active. There's a scrape. Okay. Yeah, aggregate is pretty good. And then what can I seek? I could seek another transportation, right? Because I had lots of energy. Yeah, and I do have the buffer, so I don't have to worry too much about fully defending. Okay, yeah, I'm glad I took the transportation there. Let's play the free strike, free up my hand, and then safety to gain a little bit extra block and mind blast and strike. And then let's do transportation with chemical X. Okay. And then here, yeah, I can do the swift strike, secret weapon, a Ragnarok. I can't play. Let's do consecrate, secret weapon again. And there's another transportation. Uh, yeah, still can't do Ragnarok, right? Yeah, look at that. 21, 22, 23. Okay, beautiful. So I, even though with I had played the vault, this was enough to get the combo of fire, so I'm very happy with that. There was a very late genetic algorithm. I took a, the... Um, actually, wait, did I lose? No, I didn't lose the buffer there. All right, here I was confident by entering Wrath and playing the Ragnarok it would be enough. And then I realized I was a little bit short, so I started panicking. The Windmill Strike was not enough. Just lucky it was not enough either. Uh, I was missing just a little bit. Uh, so then I figured I'll just need to play any other card like a Defend. Uh, that is still not enough. I have to play one more defense there, and then it will be enough, right? Yeah, I was really worried I have to use the duplication push or something, but yeah, it was close. I was a little too careless. I should have thought about it a little bit more. At a letter opener, every time you play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies, and dream catcher, whenever you arrest, you may add a card into your deck. So it's a potion of capacity, which I don't think I really need. And then between alpha and fission and blast me, I already had the alpha. Blast me might have been good, but I think I took the fission for more card draw. Here I got pen up every 10th attack you play, it deals double damage, and blood vial at the start of each combat, heal 2 HP. And then I figured, yeah, there's no reason to go for two question mark rooms at this point. Let's go left and get the extra uh, shot, because that would allow me to get the Highlander modifier, which I think is a pretty big deal. Yep. All right, and also with the extra gold I have, I'll be able to buy some good stuff at that shop. There's a Diva Form Electronics here, which is great, as well as Alpha. I could consider the rank entrance. Uh, it would deal some damage back to me because of the uh, Spiker, but that's fine. Also could have considered not playing the Electronics and trying to get Overkill here. Okay, 10 incoming. I have enough block there. There's Aggregate, which gives me energy back, then Rainbow, and then Hologram. Uh, I think, yeah, Ragnarok was enough to kill here. Okay. That was fairly easy. You got a flex push, which I don't think I'll take. Sands of Time stack or overclock. I figured I'll take the Sands of Time just to have a good attack card. Also, with Sneko, it's, it's good to have a high cost card. Here, first, I removed the extra transportation to get Highlander. And then I bought all the relics. Clock goes to Nia. Starge come with one artifact. Centennial puzzle. The first time I lose HP, each combat, draw three cards. I was going to buy the question card, but then I realized question card is not going to be super useful because this is I don't have many uh, regular fights uh, left. So I figured I took the Hand of Greed Crescendo and just picked up a few cards just to make sure I got to 50. I also took a Jack of all Trades. I was thinking of taking a, a potion maybe, but no, I think I was good with the ones I had. All right. So here I got the Nemesis. 18 incoming. I do start with aggregate and double energy. That allows me to get a lot of energy. And then, I unfortunately, I don't have enough. Boost sequence is only 13. Stack doesn't really give me anything. So I did still play everything I had. And then I decided that if I want to perfect, I should drink the block potion there. Okay. All right, boot sequence crescendo and uh, a rip and tear, I think. I took the boot sequence there again just to make sure I have enough block. There's a scrape that was played for free there, which is good. I do have a deceive reality. That is enough to be fully defended. I did master, uh, master reality first to get the safety be upgraded. Then did flash of steel finesse. I can do zap and transportation for panacea and swift strike as well as a doom and gloom. Okay. Battle him again is great with the master reality active. All right, 45 incoming here. There's a free strike played with the Mayhem. Um, I was trying to figure out how to defend against 45. I could duplicate the safety. That would give me 34. I first tried to calculate this without duplicating. I would have been able to fully defend, but no. I had to duplicate that safety. Okay. And then I still have to play the boot sequence. That is enough to be fully defended. And I guess I could do Alpha. No, I decided to do the, uh, the uh, Discovery, and that gave me Flying Sleeves, which is fine. Now, note that I have the double damage pendant back to for next turn, and next turn the enemy is intangible, so I just have to, all I have to do is not play an attack. There's a defend play, there's also normality, and there's no way for me to defend against 18. I do have efficient as well, so I think, I was trying to think, I really would like to save potions for the boss fight, but um, yeah, so there's the uh, rainbow. That's only 8 block now. And if I have a chance of defending, I have to go to the normality. Alright, so I had to use my potions there. Which did give me a lead, which allows me to be fully defended. And the only unfortunate thing is that now I don't have any potions for the boss fight. 
All right, there's a wall up there, which is great. And, of course, I played the strike at the very end, which means I wasted my double damage, which is a shame. All right, so here a vault was played without really uh, me wanting it to. Here I got a free scroll, which also didn't really trigger. There's an echo form, though, which is great. I did play the uh, the miracles because I have a collect, so I don't really need the energy, and I think I have enough energy to just play everything. I'm not sure why I was thinking so much about this. Um, I definitely can't do crescendo, though. So let's do echo form first. A third eye is good. Master of strategy might give me something great. It could also give me a normality. I did get evaluated and deceive, deceive reality. Those two should be useful as well. Jack of all trades gives me deep breath. I should have played another card first before playing it. That way I could have triggered the sundial. And then here, yeah, I'm trying to debate. This reality safety is pretty good. That's 24. And then I still have third eye and evaluate does also protect. Um, yeah, evaluate gives me, evaluate and protect is enough thanks to the tungsten rod to be fully defended. And then I can do collect to gain more energy later. And I think next turn, was I being attacked? Because this one decided to attack me almost every turn. No, I wasn't being attacked here, but the enemy is intangible. Because of the Echo Form Mayhem, I can only play one card, and that was the Battle Him. All right. Yeah, so Echo Form Mayhem might not be the best combination. Because it plays, if it plays a great card, then yes. If it plays a bad card, then no. Uh, so this here, double played the Omniscience, I think, right? So I played the uh, uh, Ragnarok and Hand of Greed. I should have probably just done Hand of Greed, because I think that would have given me extra gold. We got Strawberry up and pick up Bracer Mike should be by 7, and Incense Burner every 6 turns gain 1 Intangible. Spirit Shield, Fission, or Creative AI. I figured I'll take the Creative AI because it's not the um, Awakened one. And maybe I can have some, some fun f with the powers. Alright, I wasn't also sure at that point if I got combo, so I figured maybe I can do something with Heat Sinks. Alright, Zero Cost Eva form is great. Um, I also have a Transportation. Let's do Ball Lightning first, then Boot Sequence to have some block. Then Transportation gave me some great cards, including the Panache of Chrysalis. Uh, secret technique. Did I say Panache? I meant Panacea. And the secret technique, I figured I'll get something with AoE damage or defense. So I got the force field. Then I can do violence and then play my miracles to be able to play all the strikes, including the follow up. And I tried to deal damage equally. Um, but yeah, with the uh, letter opener, or not the letter opener, the um, Mercury Hourglass, I think this should be out. And the thorns I have, that should be enough to kill the backliner. Good. All right, here I got Reprogram, Chill, or Consecrate. I figured I'd take the Chill, even though it's an 8 and a 0 cost card. But I figured it might be worth a try. All right, here I got the uh, Giant Head. Uh, unfortunately, there's the Deva Form, which is free. And then Omniscience. Sorry, Deva Form is expensive. Omniscience is free. I think it is important to play the Deva Form. Also, I wasn't sure if I got combo at this point. So I thought that maybe having extra energy would allow me to try to get combo again. Here, I double played the Wish to gain Plated Armor to uh, be fully defended thanks to the Tungsten Rod. And then here I got the collect as well. Come. All right, so here I'm not being attacked. Uh, Electrodynamics is nice, but not maybe super necessary against the giant head. I still played it because, you know, it's not a bad thing to have. And then Discovery gave me White Noise, which gave me Nirvana, which unfortunately is not very useful. And then Scrape didn't give me anything. Again, note that I have double damage active. There's a conclude. Will I use the damage double damage effectively this turn? Luckily, I'm not being attacked. Okay. There's a Creative AI, which might be very useful. I also got the Rainbow. Okay. And then I probably should have done the double damage conclude, but instead I just did a double damage strike. And I picked up the Alpha Uno, so I might have been able to pull off the uh, overkill with, with the Omega. Here I'm intangible, so I played the Master Reality, Battle Him, and then Mayhem, a Defend, and then Ragnarok to deal a lot of damage. All right. Reboot, Sag the Stretch, or Just Lucky. Reboot was pretty good here, I think. Would allow me to reshuffle and gain energy with the Sundial. Right, yeah, there's Reboot and Normality, and actually Reboot is a good way to get rid of the Normality. I still can play one card, right, before having to play the Reboot. So I figured I'll play Third Eye, and it doesn't matter what, because Reboot will reshuffle. Okay. Right, I, it does mean I will also lose my Miracles, which is unfortunate. And uh, still I have trouble defending, so I have to do Protect. That's 24 block total. Oh, and then with the Plate Armor, I'm fine, right? So I don't need to play the... I don't need to bring back a defensive card. I did a strike and then collect to gain a lot of um, a lot of upgraded miracles. There I got a free upgraded, well not free, but an upgraded thunder. And there's a buffer there, which is great. I also have a vault, uh, so I think I will do both of them at some point. Um, I played the expensive miracle just so it doesn't retain my hand. And then played the non-expensive miracle. Let's do doom and gloom there. And then um, I can't do both transportation and vault, so I did bowling bash and then smite. And then did the transportation... Um, I wasn't even sure how I was going to defend. Interesting. I seek your technique. Uh, I don't have energy, right? So it has to be zero cost card. I guess it could be a miracle. Yep. And then discovery gives me amplify like water or cut fade. I took the cut I guess I have the buffer. That's why I'm not so worried about taking any damage. Come. 
And then I could play the Impatience here. A double Energy is useless. I think I should do Impatience first. And then I can do double energy. I didn't really need to, right? I was trying to get to play more cards, but I only end up with 17 here. I didn't know that I already had a, a combo previously. Okay. All right. And then 40 incoming. There's an aggregate there, which gives me a lot of energy. Talk to him in this beautiful miracle. I have double damage active. And uh, yeah, I guess I use it on the smite. Okay. Then dramatic entrance. And I can play everything, right? I have so much energy, including Chrysalis. Unfortunately, even if I play everything, I just don't have enough to get combo here. Which, again, is fine. Uh, Meteor Strike is great with Sekoi. Okay. And then here I also have the Smites, right? The normality is the only annoying thing. I mean, I do have the buffer, so I can just handle it, right? So I can just do two Smites. And, um, yeah, I don't think I have enough. Actually, right, because of Mayhem. I already played a card at the beginning. Oh, actually, the Bomb killed there. Beautiful. Got Blue Candle. I'm paying Curse cards cannot be played. One of you play Curse lose one HP and Exhausted, which is great for the normality. Mummified Hand. One of you play Power Card and Rem Card in your hand because zero that turn. We also got a Smoke Bomb, which is like the worst potion to have for the boss fight. And then Establish the Machine Learning Brilliance. I figured first Establish might not be a bad idea, but then I decided to take the Machine Learning because it might be slightly better because I don't have that many retain cards. Yeah, I was trying to think if there's anything I need to upgrade and I decided no, no, I think I'll lift again. I could also rest to gain an extra card, but I already have enough, so I think gaining extra strength is more important. All right, Time Eater. Uh, so turn one, I think it's important to play the Deva form, so I have to do that. I, I'm luckily also not being attacked, so I just played the chill and nothing else. Um, and then here, talk to the inner study. Study is not that great with the Sneko Eye Relic, so talk to the end is better. So here I have 14. I need to. Oh, I'm intangible. Okay, so I'm full of defendant here. Don't need to worry about things. I played the Agate, and I think this was my mistake. So I played a lot of junk cards. So I already played, uh, yeah, a bunch of cards I don't really need. Here I decided what to keep for next turn, and I kept all of them. And then I finished my turn, which means that next turn I can only play seven cards or five cards. I have to get lucky. Those are some good cards. I have 26 incoming. And yeah, unfortunately, I don't have enough good cards here. The best I can do is the Seed Reality and then the Safety. But that is only going to give me 16 block plus the fruit, uh, 2 from the Orb. I was hoping that maybe Flash of Steel, well, I played that. Let's do Master Strategy first. And yeah, there's a stack, but I don't have the energy to play that. So I think that was my mistake. I played too many cards previously. And um, it's not really a mistake, right? I just, I just got some bad luck. Yeah, there's a deceived reality that, I mean, I will play to get a safety, but unfortunately it's not enough. Equilibrium would have been great to have, but yeah, unfortunately lost it perfect there already. And uh, because my voice is getting a little weaker, I'm going to speed up the rest of the fight because I already missed the perfect. Obviously, I'm able to survive. Um, so yeah, I'll be back with the recap. All right, so I end up with 1381, which is not a bad score, but not amazing either. So I perfected eight out of the 13 elites, which is not bad. One of the three bosses, only the act two boss. I did get combo. I was very happy because I didn't realize that at that point. I also was able to get raining money thanks to the normality event. No way to get the I like gold modifier, right? I got I like shining Sigvidian, well fed. That would have been uh, fairly easy with the po with the relics. But yeah, I think the real challenge is to survive because um, once you get out of act one, act two gets much easier. But um, yeah, so 1381, if I perfect all the bosses, I would have given, given me 15 31 sorry and then that that is when i noticed that pels got 1633 so that is another 100 points on top of what i would have been able to get if i had perfect all the bosses which is insane i think i mentioned the word insane like three times uh then i scrolled down to my actual score um so 13 wait did i say 81 yeah 1381 would have been 34th place which is not too bad but um i think oh i, I didn't notice that before when i was recording but there was gemino there right uh yeah gemino how many points does gemino have 1422 okay that's actually a pretty good score too um so probably did everything i did actually it's only 
20, uh, 41 points more than me. That's an interesting amount of points more than me. But yeah, so Gemino did really well too. Congratulations. And I think I was ruminating on what pelts could have done differently to get such a good score. Um, but yeah, perfecting everything and getting some more modifiers, playing faster. My actual score is somewhat low, 23 or 2,391st place. That's what happens when you uh, die on Act 1. Anyway, let's review the scores from yesterday. Um, and then I always do this, right? I, I go back and review or show up the, the final screen for two seconds so you can sort of compare what cards I have. All right, so yesterday was a watcher run with the specialized modifier that gave everybody five copies of Empty Body as well as the green cards and binary modifiers. Pelts did really well with a 1309. Congratulations, Gemino got 1284. Gemino also did really well today. So Gemino decided to go for collector bonuses, end up with a total of three, which I think is the most anybody was able to get yesterday, tied with Pierre. Uh, Gemino was able to get a collector bonus on the empty body, of course, and as well as the omniscience. Um, and then Gemino decided not to go for Popper. He took the omniscience that was offered the, and, at the end of Act 1, and then that together with the apparitions ended up proving very useful. And also with the tungsten rod, apparitions were really amazing. Now Gemino also took the kunai, which he mentions was one of the main reasons he was able to affect the last boss. And I think a lot of people mentioned that too, Without Kunai, they would have trouble, and with Kunai, they were able to perfect it. Um, now, Gemino also had a bunch of shivs and weaves that was make it, that made it a little easier to trigger the Kunai more often. I actually wasn't able to afford it. I reviewed my footage from yesterday, and uh, yeah, I think in the shop where Kunai was offered, I was missing about 20 or so gold. So yeah, unfortunately, I missed that. Um, now, Gemino also was able to get Overkill, although he's not sure when that happened. And then he also was able to get Speedster, which doesn't happen often, so congratulations. Yeah, really good score, well-deserved top 20 finish. Then you have p and Ichu tied at 12-11. p perfected all the elites but missed the Act 3 boss. Now, p mentioned that not buying Kunai was a mistake probably for him. And I think that's explained by the fact that a lot of people who bought, bought Kunai was a, were able to perfect the last boss. So yeah, that's a shame. Was able to get Highlander. Um, one of the very few people who actually pulled off Highlander yesterday. And then missed Overkill but was able to get Combo with an interesting approach. He got Nightmare out of Distraction. And that with zero cost he, allowed, uh, he was able to duplicate the Insight or I guess triple the Insight. And that together with the miracles allowed him to get the combo modifier congratulations if he had gotten lucky with the act 3 boss 13 11 would have put him yeah above pelts and I actually wouldn't be surprised if pelts had the same thing but was able to affect the last boss there all right sorry happy up here from future here i the processing thing forever so i'm going to cancel it uh, i think I, I basically tried to process the video with a message in the corner that said that this is a voiceover but i think this increased the processing time from like 10 minutes to like an hour so i'm going to skip this so the video won't have that sort of uh thing in the corner uh so sorry about that i will still put it in a pinned comment so uh, please check that out if you're confused um but because of that i also noticed that i missed a few comments from yesterday so let me briefly mention that ichu was able to get 12 11 which is a pretty good uh score uh ichu was able to perfect um all the three bosses got three collective bonuses which is really good now interestingly ichu removed all of the defensive cards and just kept the empty bodies to just work on defense that way he also took the apparitions in act two which really helped he was also able to perfect the act two boss that way and then um, now Ichu skipped the kunai, but still was able to perfect the Act 3 boss, which was actually really impressive. Instead, Ichu took the Dolly's Mirror to duplicate the eruption, which is actually a really good idea. And Robin also pointed out that that might have been a good way for me to do a little better. I think uh, yesterday it was really hard to get a lot of ways to enter Wrath. So duplicating that eruption might have been a good way, a good solution to that. And then, yeah, Ichu had a lot of energy, had a lot of acrobatics and discard synergies and outmaneuvers. And then, um, yeah, was able to accumulate the energy and then just deal a lot of damage while in Wrath. So, yeah, congratulations for Ichu for such an unusual approach that ended up doing really well then you have Kirkus Malzan and Steven tied at 1209 uh, Kirkus wanted to go for Highland and Popper at the beginning but then saw the Omni omniscience decided to go for that and then also was offered a wish later on which is actually really impressive because I don't think I saw a wish at all and then a hand of greed later on as well but um, he didn't have a lot of time to gain uh, to gain a lot of gold uh, he had to use the omniscience to try to deal damage or defend uh, he ended up with two collective moves at the end interestingly Kirkus mentioned that he got the bites not the apparitions uh, which is interesting just because I think sometimes it happens or some people get impressions, other people get bites, and it's some slight RNG differences that cause that difference. Anyway, then you have Malzan with the same score. Malzan perfected five of the six elites, missed the very first one, also got all the bosses, got two collector bonuses, uh, one on the empty body and one in the apparitions, which I think most people got as well. Got 50 cards total too, so that he was able to get the Inscribium modifier. Now, Malzan took the Div uh, Diva form, which you mentioned was very useful, and I uh, that's one of the reasons I decided to take it today, and I think it ended up being really useful today for me as well. 
And then Mazan also took the Alpha. Uh, now, because of the fact that he was going for rare cards, he decided to also take the Snickoi Relic, which helped quite a bit. And then he also had an early lesson learned, which allowed him to get a bunch of cards upgraded. Uh, now, Mazan also mentioned that for the Act 3 boss, he required the Kunai to do really well, and then uh, mentioned that it was a fun, interesting deck, uh, which is not expected with Binary. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. But then Malzan also mentioned in the last few weeks, uh, the modifiers were not super fun. I think Hoarder is probably the most fun modifier, and that hasn't shown up a lot in the last few weeks, which I think can explain why the modifiers seem a little less fun. Then you have Steven with the same score. Uh, so Steven uh, also went for collector bonuses, took the apparitions and rares, and also mentioned that the kunai was really huge. Uh, he was able to perfect the last boss. Uh, it did take him forever, but he ended up with over 30 decks at the end. So yeah, congratulations. Also, Steven was one of the people who pointed out that the tie breaks with the same score are determined by how old your Steam account is. And usually Steven's, uh, Steven's Steam account is really old. Uh, usually he's at the bottom, but there's one person with a lower score, or I guess lower ranking, the dark. Yeah, so that means that um, uh, his team account must have been even older than Steven's, so that's interesting. Then you have David 1184. David is still on vacation, so it's not streaming, so congratulations and enjoy your vacation. Then you have Pierre here with 1109. Uh, Pierre perfected five of the six elites, but only one of the three bosses. Pierre decided to go for collector bonuses, got three of them, including apparitions, empty body, and acrobatics. Uh, but then Pierre also decided to go for the popper modifier, which I think might explain why he was not or had trouble with perfecting the other two bosses. He did mention that he almost was able to perfect the last boss, but missed it by one block, which is always unfortunate. And then, yeah, that's it for the top 100. Let's jump to my score, which is slightly lower. I died to the champ with 399 points. Um, that was my first attempt. My second attempt, I got 729 points. Uh, but there, I also died to the um, to the final boss, the Awakened One. So, yeah, not much I could have done there. I did decide to go for Highlander and Popper, and I think that was a mistake in retrospect. A few other people died. You have Alex, who died on the Act 3 boss. Uh, Alex took the Omniscience, but had nothing really useful to Omniscience. Um, also, Alex mentioned that was the first time he took the Apparitions, which... Um, I, I mean, congratulations. It's a great card to have for the, uh, for the especially for the Ascension runs. Happy Happy for the Future again. I should mention Shadow also pointed out that he died to the champ on Act 2. Um, now, uh, Shadow does play on the mobile version. Um, and instead of having five copies of Empty Body, the mobile version had five copies of Empty Fist, uh, which caused uh, generally people to have less defensive cord. And then the funny thing is that uh, I assume Shadow lost a lot of HP before the Hexagos fight, which he had yesterday. And right before the Hexagos fight, he got the Wheel Event, which gave him a full heal, which... Uh, which is, uh, as he mentioned, one of the funniest way to lose a perfect. So, yeah, that's that's funny. Then you have Goldberry, who died to the champ. Uh, Goldberry just had no chance. Also, like me, decided to go for Highlander and Popper, which he mentioned was a mistake, most likely. Uh, Goldberry reran the run and decided to go for collector bonuses and not go for Popper. And he was almost able to perfect all the elites and got all the bosses, though. Got two collector bonuses, including the apparitions, and then also had two omnisciences, which were very useful with the apparitions. So, yeah, uh, I think that, that really proves that going for um, Highlander and Popper was a mistake yesterday. Uh, Panda also mentioned he died to the Act 1 boss, and then Grimgoth uh, died on Act 2, not to a boss, but just was slowly taking damage throughout the Act and just died at one point. Uh, now, a bunch of replies, uh, in, in the reply to Grimgoth, uh, a bunch of people mentioned that Watcher, the Watcher is not their favorite character, and that's blasphemy, pun intended. Um, I actually really like the Watcher. Um, it's probably my favorite character, and I'll explain. I think people brought up, brought up good points why they like other characters more, but um, I think the Watcher is probably the only character that I can play an Ascension 20 Heartbreaker run with and not rely on a lot of luck to do well. Uh, you do need some luck to get some good cards, Um but all the other characters, you need some synergy, and you need to make sure that you get those synergy cards early on to get through the fights. But with the Watcher, you can sort of just like, yeah, you can sort of just go through the uh, the run with uh, with the eruption and do really well with it. Um, I think the other reason is that the Wrath, uh, the Watcher has the ability to hit a lot of elites early on, and so that way you start off the run with some good rare cards possibly and some good relics. And uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons I really like the Watcher. Anyway, that's it for yesterday. Uh, let me know in the comments what you did for today, and uh, if you had some sort of secret that allowed you to do well. I guess my second run was not too bad, right? Um, uh, wait, why did I score? Yeah, my actual run is not too great, though. Yeah, I died pretty early on. But yeah, second one was pretty good. Uh, I'll look forward to reading your comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.